Um, we have this one. Yeah, this is just with my and then uh, uh, probability. So I think I have two more units. Let's do quick because I'm working done, and then I can just. Well, I've I thought we were doing logs. Oh, that's true. We may we may do a little bit of logs. That will that will be at the very end. So you've seen it before, but yeah, let me see. Let me double check. Oh yeah. Oh my Yeah, conics, stats, and logs. Oh, you were right. Just logs are amazing. Like we'll see the calculus. Busy yeah. yeah. No, I'm already stressing myself out. Yes. Today. Yes. Today. Yes. Today. Yes. Today. Yes. Today. Yes. Today. Yes. 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 So on the back of your calendar, uh, we we did multiplication of complex numbers. We did division of complex numbers. So today we're doing powers of complex numbers. Um, so uh, we saw with multiplication and division, uh, there's a couple of operations that's going on, right? With multiplication, we get the multiplication in the beginning, but then it switches with beta. It, it's a different operation. It's addition. With division, uh, we do divide the radius, but then the operation for theta is subtraction. So same idea here, if I want to raise my complex number to a power, I'm going to be raising my radius to a power, but then my theta is going to be multiplication. So uh, with the theta, so the theta operation is going to be a little different than um, the, the operations that we do with the radius. The radius is going to follow exactly with the name that we see um, of the operation, but then the theta is always going to be something a little bit different. So. Uh, we're working with this uh, formula here. And also, uh, we're going to be talking about the nth roots of complex number. So we'll split this up into, um, yeah, we'll, we'll have uh, two days to kind of get really comfortable with this. But we're going to be copying this formula down for this uh, powers uh, theorem. Okay. So powers are the shorthand for repeated multiplication, right? Two to the third power is like two times two times two. Um, so the pattern uh, is going to change uh, when we raise a complex number in polar form for an exponent. Okay, uh, at least between the radius and the theta value. So if I'm going to raise um, my complex number to a power, uh, this is in polar form already. So I'm going to keep it in polar form. Uh, so I'm going to have to raise the radius to that power. So the radius is always going to follow uh, whatever I'm. I expect to do with my operation. But what's different is that theta is not going to be uh, raised to the power, it's going to be multiplied uh, with that value. So cosine of. Okay. N times theta. Plus I sine times N times theta. So uh, here's the example that we're going to follow here. Uh, find the power of the complex number in polar form. So I want to find z to the fifth. Now z is just uh, this number here, this complex number here. I'm going to raise it to the fifth power. Uh, it says answer in both uh, polar and rectangular form. We're always going to try to work in polar form first. It just feels easier that way. And once you get through that polar form, then we can always convert to rectangular form by distributing through and getting rid of the theta and evaluating the cosine and sine. OK, so the first step. Uh, we're going to be raising our radius to that power, just like what we would expect to do. So three. Root two. Raised to the fifth. Now, if you want to plug in the calculator, you got to make sure you put the three and the root two in a set of parentheses. If you just do three root two to the fifth, that five is not going to see the three. So. Okay, so three root two to the fifth. All right, cosine. N times theta was my N value. Five, right, so that five is not going to get raised. It's going to get multiplied for theta. OK, 
Okay, so uh, we put this in our calculator. Three to the fifth times root two to the fifth ends up being nine seventy two root two. And um, your calculator may not quite get you that full value, so you can just kind of break it down a little bit because three to the fifth is a number, root two to the fourth is a number, and then root two is just going to be by itself. Yes. How are we supposed to do this if we can't use a calculator on the back? Um, the numbers will be easier, and also um, if you're unable to get this cleaned up, you can leave it in this form. You can leave it in. Uh, so in, in this form here, okay. But right now, I'm just going to try to break it down a little bit further. Okay. But on the test, um, uh, you'll get to use your unit circle, and the numbers won't be so hard that that you won't be able to do it by hand. Okay. But for now, uh, three to the fifth times root to the fourth, that's going to get us nine seventy two. Okay. Now, if you don't recognize 25 pi over 6, what can we do to make it more? Um, yeah, subtract by 2 pi, or in this case, 12 pi over 6, because I want to match common denominator. So 25 minus 12. Now, this gives me 13 over 6. 13 over 6 is still outside my range, so I can do what again? Well, subtract another 12 over 6, so I get pi over 6, 1 over 6. So um, 25 pi over 6, same thing as pi over 6. Okay, so here we can um, bracket this off. We know this is polar form. This is our answer in polar form. Uh, but for rectangular form, we're going to distribute this through. Uh, we're going to find cosine and sine of pi over 6, which are unit circle values. So we're 3 over 2 and 1 half. Okay, multiply this through. Again, these numbers feel a little large, but now we're just going to Copy this down. Nine seventy two divided by two is forty six. Root two times root three is root six. Nine seventy two divided by two is forty six. The root two stays um, with the second term here, and then attach the i. So this is our rectangular form. Okay, so next um, we want to do this evaluation. We want to find this negative one plus root three i cubed. Okay, we could foil everything out and work that through, but right now, what form is this in? Rectangular form, right? Uh, it's the same um, thing as what we did for number one. We're all, we're still going to raise it to the uh, third power, but our suggestion is we're going to try to get this into polar form first. Once we get into polar form, then we can just follow this rule. So this just feels a little bit cleaner. So uh, we're going to have to go through our process to convert our um, rectangular form to complex form or to polar form. So uh, we're going to have to go through uh, Pythagorean theorem and inverse tangent. Pythagorean theorem and inverse tangent. So one plus three is four, root four is two. Okay. 
inverse tangent. Now we're going to have to rely on our unit circle here. So it's basically asking where is tangent equal to root three or negative root three. And so remember tangent is sine over cosine, right? So this is going to be a variation of what? Pi over three, pi over four, pi over six. Pi over three because it's sine over cosine, right? Tangent is sine over cosine. So if I cover up the two, root three over one is root three, that's pi over three. And then, um, sorry, we want to do this in degree. Um, polar form, yeah, it's easier with degrees. So we know it's going to be that 60 degree um, idea. Yes. Since it's inverse tangent, do you just do the same thing? Yes, inverse tangent is this. Let me show you here. So if I say tangent of theta is equal to um, root 3, that's the same thing as saying theta is equal to inverse tangent of root 3. Inverse tangent just allows us to move the inverse tangent and get that theta by itself. So. It's not. It's nothing with cotangent. It's still a tangent. It's just moving things to get that theta to solve for theta. So um, it's important for us to know which quadrant we're in here. So negative one plus root three. Which quadrant is that? Quadrant two. So we know um, this is going to be in that um, sixty degree, right? Or pi over three, sixty degree. Um, reference angle, but we want to get this into second quadrant. So what do we do? Or yeah, involve 180, right? So 180 minus 60, which is 120. Okay, so you're going to have to know your inverse tangents or finding your tangent values using your unit circle, right? Sine over cosine, so y over x. Okay, so let's get it into a uh, polar form, and then we could just follow what we did here. We're going to raise it to the third power. So we raise uh, the radius to the third power, but for theta, what do we do with that three? So multiply, yeah. Hey, what's three times 120? Six. 360, okay. So. Cosine of 360 is the same thing as cosine of zero. Sine of 360 is the same thing as sine of zero. So we can box this off. This is our polar form. That's our polar answer. If I want to get it into a rectangular form, I can just resolve the cosine and sine of zero and distribute the A through. What's cosine of zero? One, what's sine of zero? Zero. zero. So you can say it as eight plus zero I, or you can just say eight. Either way is fine. If you want to, if you feel more comfortable um, putting the A plus B I form, then you can leave it in that form or you can drop that zero. All right, uh, we're going to see some relationships here between these two, but we're going to go through the same process for this problem. We'll get it into um, polar form. Practice uh, finding R and theta and using your unit circle values. Okay. So same process, just the number is a little bit different. And okay. which quadrant is this going to be in? 
third quadrant. Okay, so but a lot of the numbers will feel the same. Hey, so 240 times 3 is going to be 720, and 720 is just another variation of 360. So we get the same answer, right? <clears throat> so if we know that both of these are equal to eight, then it says, what is the cube root of eight equal to? Well, cube root of eight is equal to this without the three, right? Take the cube root, that becomes that, because we know these are the same. So uh, I want to make a, a couple of uh, statements that, that we already know to be true, right? Because we know that these are both equal to eight. So I want you to write it in this form here. Let me see if I can get it. Okay, so I know this is true, right? I know that negative one plus square root of 3i from the very beginning cube is equal to 8. We know that's a true statement. Right, because that's what we gathered from. OK, also know that negative 1 minus root 3i cubed is also equal to 8. And what else do we know cubed is equal to 8? 2 cubed is equal to eight. So another way that I can write two is I can say two plus zero i. So then it's saying, what is the cube root of eight equivalent to? Well, cube root of eight, I can just take the cube root of both sides. So cube root of eight is just the cube root of this, cube root of this, and cube root of this. So cube root of eight has three answers. It's either, right, the cube root in three just goes away. So negative one plus root three i. Cube root of eight is also equal to negative one minus root three i, because Anytime like the key root just wipes away that that exponent. And then cube root of eight is also equal to two. And so this kind of leads into what we're going to do on the next page, where um, uh, if we're trying to find a root of a solution, there's always going to be however many solutions that we see the root is. So if there's a fourth root, then we're expecting four solutions. If there's a cube root, we're expecting three solutions. And all these three solutions are going to show up the same distance apart from each other on, um, on the R polar plane. So let's just graph these points here and see what they look like. Now, you may not be familiar with what these points look like, but 
we, we can graph them a little bit easier in their polar form, right? So it's either e easier to graph these polar forms here. So 120, cosine of 120, that's our theta. Our radius is two. So we find 120. So that's equivalent to negative one plus root three i. So negative one minus root three i, that's the same thing as cosine of 240 with a radius of two. So 240. And finally, 2 plus 0 i, that's just going to be um, 2 to the right. So imagine order pair of 2, 0, that's easy to plot. So all your solutions are going to be the same distance away. So they're all, in this case, 60 degrees from each other. I just want to give a preview for the formula that we're going to be using. So if I want to find the number of solutions, it's always going to be 360 divided by n. In this case, my n is 3, so 360 divided by n is 120. So all my solutions are 120 degrees apart from each other. So 0 to 120, 120 to 240, 240 to 360. Okay, so that so this leads into I think the most complicated part of this unit is um, uh, finding the number of solutions when there is a root involved. But this gives us a little bit of a preview that we're going to be looking for the number of solutions that we see in the roots, and they're all going to be spread out the same distance apart from each other. So if we, if we find one of them, we can kind of just keep adding this uh, increment to find the next one. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to find one solution and just keep find, adding the increment until we find all of the solutions all around the circle. I'm sorry. Yeah, so um, the negative one plus root three i, that's the same thing as two cosine 120 plus i sine 120. So if I know my radius and theta, it's easy for me to plot those points. OK, so let's slow down and we'll, we'll do uh, one of these problems from scratch where we're dealing with the roots. So. Um, this, um, we can use uh, the power rule to derive a formula for evaluating the roots of a complex number. So basically, let me just show you what that formula looks like. If I want to find the nth root of z, that's the same thing as z to the 1 over n. So what the formula will look like is going to be this. It's going to be r to the 1 over n. And before we had cosine and sine multiply. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply by 1 over n, but it's going to end up in the denominator. So it's going to be cosine of 1 over n times theta plus i sine. So if my power is in the denominator, then it's going to look a little bit different. It's going to, instead of n theta, it's going to be theta divided by n. Okay, so example it says find all distinct fourth. Yes, question. Oh, I'm just if I do th uh, one over n times theta, that's the same thing as theta divided by n. Oh. Yeah, so just a different variation, but they mean the same. Okay, it says find all distinct roots of negative five plus um, twelve i. So really, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the fourth root of this. Right. But just like what we discovered before, we're always going to work, get it down to polar form first, and then we'll use the formula, right? So we're always going to, if we're given a rectangular form, we're always going to be um, trying to get it into polar form. And how many solutions are we looking for, you think? Good. So we're looking for four solutions. But the idea is that if I can find one solution, if I can find the pattern, I can just keep adding that pattern and find all my solutions. So once I get to one solution and the pattern, then the rest is a lot easier. Okay. But let's get to our. Um, Radius and theta first. So, 
my radius is like the Diagonal Theorem, a squared plus d squared. Theta is inverse tangent of 12 over negative 5. Now bear with me here. I know this is not a unit circle value. Let's use our uh, our calculator for now, but on the test, it'll be a, a degree measure that is easy to find on the unit circle. Okay. But look, which quadrant are we in here? Second quadrant. Okay. So right now, let's just revert to our calculator because this is not going to be a unit circle value. Make sure you're in what mode here? Degree, yes. It's, we want to find degrees. It's easier that way. But this won't be on the test. Right, right. If I if this if it's not a calculator, I gotta give you something that you can find on the unit circle. Yeah, so, but right now the, the example is non-unit circle, but let, let's just practice through the process. Okay, what do we get for theta? <laughs> I want to get the second quadrant, so what do I do? Add 180. All right, let's build our um, one of the solutions, right? One of the solutions. Right, so 13 raised to the one fourth. My n is four, right? So I'm just going to put everything divided by four. All right, let's clean this up a bit. The 4 through 13 is good, but we, let's just get it down to a number that we can uh, work with. Again, not unit circle value, but we're just going to get decimals out of this. Okay, what'd you guys get for your theta? 28. Good, 28.155 degrees plus I sine 28.155 degrees. Okay, so we'll box this off. This is one of our solutions. We're looking for how many more? Three, Three more, right? Because we were four solutions, right? But, oh, these, these are the same thing, by the way, right? This is just the cleaned up version. So this is my first solution. Now, to find my other three solutions, I'm going to use my formula here. Um, the number of solutions, my solutions are all going to be It's either 360 divided by n or it's 2 pi divided by n, depending on which mode you're in. So right now we're in degree mode. So we're going to divide by what? 360. Oh, 360, yeah, 360 divided by 4, yeah. What is that equal to? 90, okay. So this is how we're going to get to our other solutions. Everything will stay the same. We're just going to change the degree measure and we're going to keep adding 90. So. If I get if I add 90, that will get me to my second solution. Add 90 again, that will get to my third solution. Add 90 again, that will get to my fourth solution. But everything else stays the same. My radius stays the same. Cosine and I sine will still be there. Okay, it's not hard. It's just we have to go through a lot of steps to get there. Okay, so 28.155 plus 90 is 118, plus 90 is 208, plus 90 is 298. And everything will stay the same. Everything will stay the same, yeah. So anytime you're you're dealing with a root problem, you're going to just, you're, all your work is going to be pretty much getting to that first solution, figuring out the pattern, and then adding that pattern until you get the number of solutions you're looking for. Okay, let's just do one more of these so we can kind of get this under our belt and then tomorrow we'll we'll get more practice. Okay, so I'm not going to do anything is tomorrow. We're just really going to practice this type of problem because this is what takes the longest to get through. To get through.
All right, so let's go through the full process there. Um, let's go to page 26. All right, we're going to skip 26. Those are the, um, the, the easier problems. Let's go to um, number eight on page 27. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to, yeah, we'll leave it just in polar form, right? Let's not, I'm, I won't ask you to get it into rectangular form. OK, number eight is asking for this will be a little bit easier. We can uh, do this um, potentially without a graphing calculator, but let's get let's see if I can. Um... OK, all right, I have, I have a little bit of time. OK, so six roots of I. So how many solutions am I looking for? Six, six solutions. Now, um, what's a way for me to write I in A plus B I form? So zero plus one I. OK. Now this is easy enough for us to graph and know the degrees, right? Well, I can if we if we want to find radius, you can. So it's just it's just going to be what? It's going to be one. Now plot this order pair like you would um, on the coordinate plane. So where's it going to land? Yeah, ninety degrees, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, however, we do need to leave it in terms of pi, so, so pi over 2, yep, yeah. so theta is pi over 2. So this is a nice unit circle value, so. All right, so we're going to have to build this um, using um, radiance. OK, so we know our solution is going to be uh, z equals. At least one of the solution. Remember, this is sixth root, so we got to raise it to the one sixth. So we have one to the one sixth. And then we do cosine of. I think in this case, maybe it's easier to uh, to do one over n times theta, so you're not deal with a, a complex fraction. So one sixth times what? Times pi over two, yeah. Sorry, I lost the page here. And just drop that one six. You know, anything race, um, one race to anything is always just one. So we can, that's going to make it easier here. Okay, we have one solution. We're looking for how many more? Five more. Okay. So um, our formula is the other solutions. It's either 360 over n or 2 pi over n. But we're in terms of radians, so we'll do 2 pi over n. So 2 pi divided by what? 6, which reduces to be pi over what? Pi over 3. OK, so this is how we're going to get to our other solution. We're going to keep adding pi over 3, and then the theta will keep changing. It is, yeah. So pi over two divided by one six. Times six, not times one six. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Sorry, it's divided by six. Right. Oh, it's divided by six. Divided by six. Which is yeah, divided by six. Okay. Now, uh, if I want to just do a common denominator, so I can just keep adding the, the same number over and over again. Um, pi over three is same thing as um, four pi over twelve, right? So I'm going to keep adding 4 pi over 12, the same thing as pi over 3, and that will get to all my solutions. So pi over 12 plus 4 pi over 12 is what? 5, 5 pi over 12, okay, that's my second solution. Plus 5 plus 4 is 9 pi over 12, that's my second solution. 9 plus 4 is 13 pi over 12, that's my fourth solution. 
13 plus 4 is 17. 17 over 12, that's my fifth solution. And then 17 plus 4 is 21. So 21 over 12, which can reduce to be 7 fourths. You don't have to reduce these, these fractions, but I did for, for me, for mine, but um, you don't, and then you don't have to do the sixth root of one. I, I just reduced it down to one, but you can leave it as sixth root if you want, but or one to the one sixth, any variation is fine, but it's basically just one. And you're just, the, the hard part is getting to the first solution, finding the pattern, and after that, you're just adding that pattern to all your solutions. Okay, nothing new tomorrow. We're just going to stick with this topic until we get comfortable with the process. All right, we're going to get your phones. Right, and this is the last topic. Tomorrow review, Monday review, Tuesday review, and the Wednesday test. I know Tuesday is going to be a little bit of a 